Hello, hello everybody. Happy Wednesday to people that are already in the audience and happy Wednesday or whatever day of the week it is to those of you that are watching the replay. Thank you so much. Philip is here with her coffee and toast with Vegemite, ready to say hi to everybody. So happy you could join us today. Michelle has got a great day for crafting. Hi, Gail. Hi, Kathy. I hope you have a slow time at the shop right now and then lots of sales later on in the day when, uh, when you don't have to worry about being distracted from here. Hope everybody is having an awesome Wednesday so far or Thursday, depending on what, what uh, part of the country you're in. Let's see here. All right. That might be, oh, I forgot I moved my little picture. I forgot. I made some adjustments. I went live on um, Instagram recently. And so that sort of changed some things around. Let's see. We can make it a little bigger. I don't want to take over the whole screen, but at least you can see me smile. Hi, Sue Fiber Art, Sue Brown. We're going to do some art by committee to start with. Isn't that fun, right? <laughs> I was, uh, I needed to clean up the studio. It's not clean yet. It's not even close to clean. Good evening, Andrea. How are you doing tonight? But I found this little piece of fabric that I must have had a plan for. It's already um, bonded to some felt. And it was like, you know, it's a nice size for a doodle cloth. So I thought, well, let's, let's just play around with some things. And so I had this idea that what I wanted to do was make little circles real tiny circles. And I've already decided, okay, I already made one decision without you guys. This is just too yellow to go with that. It's just too much in my face. Eventually I'll find the right use for that. I'm, I'm thinking blues and golds. That's the colors I want to play with. And so I also had this blue and it, it felt a little bit much. Hey, Margaret. Hi, Joanne. Margaret's at work, but you can't chat, but you're watching. Thank you so much for that. Riri, hello there. Going to add old jeans to new ones. Oh, I like that idea. And I'm, I'm thinking this might be too dark. I think the blue is going to be an accent. I wish I had this in a fatter fiber, and I just didn't want to take the time to do anything else. But what I'm thinking I want to do, okay, picture this. You put your imagination hats on and I want to do circles of really wonky circles because, you know, perfect circles in me. That's not going to happen. Hi, Hina. How are you doing tonight? So I want to do little circles everywhere. And then I just want to stitch around them and inside them. You know, <laughs> Philippa, maybe we need to have a Zoom session or something where you can help me with the finger knitting because I stink at it. It just, and I thought, well, I could do some quick cordage, um, but I'm, I'm like all thumbs with the finger knitting and I'm going to have to just sit and practice with it. So I could do two strands. So really, let's see, where'd my little one go? I had one piece cut. That's way too big, but okay. I have one little piece cut. All right, let's see if I double it. I don't want to make it too fiddly because then it's not ditto on the finger knitting or ditto on being a klutz with the finger knitting because I just, yeah, doubled at least is better. All right, I was somewhat prepared. Ta da! I have a needle and it's, whoops, I have a needle here and it's all threaded. Do you want me to bring you down any or is that good enough to see? Hello, Malaya. You're working, you're lurking and making painty papers. Ooh, and then are they going to go in your shop? Are they hopefully going to go in your shop? All right. And I'm, here's how, how wonky these are going to be. I'm not going to worry. Oh, that you can, that I should do the finger knitting. Yeah. I need to, um, maybe we need to do a Zoom session. You guys can teach me how to do the finger knitting. I just, I'm all klutzy. I'm not going to worry if I have a loop here because I'm going to come back in with lots of stitches. So my idea is just to really quickly get down some wonky stitches. I started a board over on, uh, not wonky stitches, some wonky circles. Start a board over on Pinterest on circles because I was not sure. You made about seven zillion. Yeah, I think a few might land in your shop. Did you have a plan for me? You making journals or paper packs or what? Christmas gifts? Oh, see, now that's gonna turn out to be a, a decent circle. Who would have thought? 
Yeah, I just, oh, that's a thought too. We can do some, um, I'll do that on another one. Thanks for that idea, Michelle. So what I decided to do is I started a board on Pinterest so that I could see how I felt about circles because I never really liked doing them when I was doing a lot of painting and collaging, but I thought maybe with stitches, they would be different. Victoria said, thank you for last night's Zoom session. It was fun and lovely to see everyone face to face. I am so happy you were able to join us and it was just, it was great fun. It really is a different level for those of you that can come to the Zoom sessions. I'm thinking I might do one more in December because I would like to, yeah, I could braid it. That's another idea, Sue. Thank you, Sue Fiber Art. Um, I think, I, I, I feel like I didn't get enough chances for the people that in Australia and in New Zealand to be able to join with this. So I need to kind of figure out, so I might do one, one or two more free sessions this month just because I can. Hey, Hummer. Liva or Liva Digital. Hello, welcome. Glad to have you here. I think I could learn to love circles. Hi, Margaret. Good morning to you. It was really weird. I was um, live on Instagram and doing things there like I would do over here, you know, um, saying who was joining and stuff. I think they might have thought I was a little odd. I don't think people normally do that on Instagram lives, <laughs> but it was okay. I have to be me, right? All right, there's a really wonky circle, and I'm okay with that. Let's try Michelle's idea, and let's. I'm going to double it and put some knots in it. I just figured that, you know, a, a doodle cloth that's small is kind of fun because then you don't have the pressure, like, you know, okay, I can just experiment on here, and of course, you know, it's a good size for a vessel, but all right. Now that I'm going, you guys tell me what you are doing. Somebody's doing something with blue jeans. Malay is painting like crazy. You know, I could just do so many knots because I do love knots. I don't know what, what is so satisfying about making knots. It's just really, it's sort of like getting paint on paper. Anybody trying to finish up some last minute holiday gifts? Your doodle cloths are turning into needle books. Isn't that wonderful? Then they have a life of their own. I have thought about making some needle books multiple times. And then I realized that I am, I'm working in so many places that um, I just leave a mess all over the place. I wouldn't put them back away. I wouldn't put everything back away again. Messer is a uh, Michelle. Victoria said, I've watched others doing the same thing on Instagram live, but as usual, you can't please everyone. You do you. You're right. You're right, Victoria. And I just, I'm not going to stress about it. What I liked is that they, um, now I can go live on Instagram using my webcam and StreamYard, And that worked out really well for me. But if I do it again, I might just need to get somebody else that can come read the comments for me and like type them into a Google Doc or something. I don't know. Michelle, whoops, I'm, I'm not paying attention here. Um, Sue, yes, I did uh, dye the fabric. <laughs> Victoria says, I'm going to be just as surprised as the kids and grandkids when they open their presents as I cannot for the life of me remember what I've bought any of them. I remember those days. Oh, so Sue Brown cut some patches for some additional blocks for one of the quilts I mentioned I was stuck on. We'll see how they work later. Philippa says, I'm trying to sell them as I'm so prolific. Well, that is awesome. I hope that you are able to find a home for them. I'm going to have to go back over this with um, a lint thingy because the dog, of course, it's everywhere. I, you know, that's kind of where I'm at trying to think about what I can do that would be easy sells. And I hate to say it like that, but things that aren't going to take me hours and hours because then I don't have to price them like that. And that I can work my way through some of the stuff. Um, you know, I was hoping to do that with more of the fabric packs and some of the fabrics that I've dyed. 
but I, they're not quite as popular as I thought they would be. So maybe I need to make them into something. Sue Fiber Art says, I'm still stitching the mini doodle cloth collages I made. Football is still on. <laughs> Margaret says, I finally have both my new shelves in place. I haven't started filling them, but I've been able to use one to clear a space on my table, making a mass of cards for the gallery. Oh, that's wonderful to have that space. Those of us that were on Zoom last night got to see Victoria's studio space that she's been working on forever. She has one of those adjustable desks, which I can totally see being very helpful. Hello, Denise. How are you doing today? Welcome. Glad you could join us. She says, hope you're all ready for the holidays. You know what? It's really easy for us. We just need to pack up a few things and drive over the mountain to my in-laws. <laughs> well, it's easy for me. My husband will be doing some kind of cooking. I am spoiled. I know that. I know it. I know it. I know it. So, yeah, if I, I could have um, traced a circle onto this fabric, but I know me. I would have traced it and then I still wouldn't have been able to stay on the lines and then I would have beaten myself up and this would have just been tossed in the corner of the studio. And I don't want to do that. I did finish editing a new video this morning. Oh, Malaya is being an enabler. She said the adjustable tables at Home Depot are on saying, just saying. Yeah, I could, I could totally see the appeal of that. I did find a way that I could raise my chair here at my desk that's so high enough that I can still have my feet touch the ground and still work here. So it's a little better than it used to be. It's kind of hard since my studio, well, one of my studio spaces is in the living room, you know, and I kind of still want it to look nice. I admire people that do something like this, couching stuff down and they have it, you know, perfectly evenly spaced around things. But I am getting better at accepting um, the wonkiness that is me. Joanne says, my mind is still into Christmas ornaments, so I'm going to make them for next year. I try to make things that can be used year round, so I'll be pushing them as doorknob hangers. That's a brilliant idea. What a brilliant idea. What other things could you use a um, Christmas tree ornament for? I like that, doorknob hangers. Margaret uses circles. Yeah, how many of you guys like circles? I mean, I, I I, think when I think back to when I was doing a lot of jelly painting and jelly printing and painting, I think my problem with circles was I had not yet let go of the perfectionism. So I was still trying to be too perfect. And doing them imperfectly frees me up so much. Hummer is making angel earrings and bracelets to give out for Christmas, making felting sweaters for shoulder bags and knitting hats and cutting up my husband's robes for big pillows. My goodness. So my other colors that I'm going to use is this kind of a blue green. And so what I'm going to do is once I get some circles down, I'm going to go inside and outside the circles with doodles. I mean, I'm just going to play like that. And look at me. I, I am starting with couching, but I'm not going straight to feather stitch. <laughs> so Michelle likes circles. Philippa likes circles. Gail likes circles. Sue likes circles. Yeah, my circles are off in eggs. I hear you there. All right, this one's already doubled. So, um, you know, I need to just cut some random things and not thinking about it. An adjustable height table sounds lovely. The time required to move everything off the current table and set things up again is enough to keep it like it is. Yeah, I would have to have a dedicated space. Jackie says, hi, Jackie. It was so fun to have you there last night. Looking at your Instagram account, I'm going to have to look more often. Lots of inspiration. Yeah, I haven't quite mastered <laughs> getting um, things that are on Instagram over on Facebook. Uh, I, I really need to hire a virtual admin, you know, to do some part-time work for me. I think that would help. Hey, Vicki. Hello. Gosh, it was nice to have you join us last night. So much fun to meet you and see you face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it just seemed, I just, I, I have a gazillion things of thread um, spread out over the island in the studio because um, I'd been rolling things into little balls. 
or onto their little bobbin cards and they're just a mess all over the place. So I just sort of left them there and just started picking through here to see what colors might go with this. And yeah, there might be something else, but for now this is going to be just fine. I've been trying to post more um, for a couple of reasons. Let's try it this way. I don't know if this is going to work for me. Can I? No, it's too small. I have to do it on a bigger one. Yeah, I'm trying to get a little bit more active on posting um, videos now that I have. Uh... Hey, there's Abby. You must be on the road. I know you had errands today. Um, but you know, now that you guys told me that you're okay with the videos where I'm just working and talking, I am fine with turning on the camera during those times. Uh, if I don't have to do it, you know, I'm trying to go through and edit a little bit. So I'm thinking I have one, I was going to post it in the morning and I thought, well, I always post in the mornings. Maybe I should post it in the evening. Again, thinking about my people on the other side of the country. So I might post it like around dinner time. Yeah, isn't it been great, Andrea, to meet people on Zoom? It just, it, it feels like, you know, we sat down and had coffee together. Ooh, Joanne says, I'm contemplating a total new look the first of the year, going blonde to cover up the gray. Maybe I will join a Zoom session then. <laughs> yes, Abby at Purple, Purple Cottage Crafts are, is here. Yeah, I miss my blonde. I don't miss sitting in the chair for, you know, four hours, but I do miss my blonde. But it was, you know, I, I let it go. Well, Michelle, we will be happy to have you join us at any time. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice just to, to be in the same room and have coffee together? And It just feels like the next best thing to me. And we don't have to travel and we can stay in our jammies if we want. Philippa says, I thoroughly enjoy the Stitch and Chat videos. Well, thank you. Hey, June. <laughs> June, thank you. It's me that never remembers. I'm a ditz with names until I've done it for like a couple months. Abby says, we're on our way home to Helena after being in Butte this morning. I may lose connection as we're going over a pass. Just wanted to pop in and say hi to everyone. Well, I am happy to see your name pop up at any time. Can you picture as, as a blonde, June? Can you picture Joanne blonde? I think that would be fun. I would like to um, have just a little bit of green on the tips of my hair, but I made the suggestion to my husband and he shook his head. So I suppose that will have to wait for another time. My hair is getting so thin, there's not going to be a whole lot of it to cover pretty soon. Let's see, is this, these are two different links. Let's do this. Oh, that's a short one. Okay. Natural tint, nature, nature tint hair color, no smell. It's a gel and it's so easy. Oh, how long does it last? Whoops. All right, let's just do a little, I don't have a little bit of thread there. So let's just double this guy up. Margaret said, I enjoy going pink, but it never stays in my hair very long. Yeah. She is lovely now, too. I agree, June. Philip has embraced the gray. Malaya said, I made the deci vital decision to stop coloring my hair and embrace my grays. Sue said, I'm surprised every time I see our eldest granddaughter, her hair is never the same color twice. So the gel is long lasting. Yeah, I probably need to get like a washout one and see because I don't know. I have a couple friends that color just the tips and I just I think it looks like it's fun, but they probably go in and get haircuts more often. It's been probably two, three years, three years since I've had a haircut. I think I'm going to have to start embracing hats because my hair is getting thinner and thinner. And my mom's hair is very, very thin, too. So I was telling my husband today, I think I'm going to look at hats. You know, I could be known as that gal with, you know, the some kind of a artistic hat. If I could get a nice base hat and then I could do stuff to it and make it mine. Oh, lucky you, Gail. Yeah, 
Michelle says, I'm not ready to go gray. I like the blonde. Yeah, I really did. I, I really liked my blonde because I was blonde all the way through high school and, you know, into my 30s. Well, no, I wouldn't say too much into my 30s. Pregnancy started changing my hair. Joanne said, I wanted my hair to change to all silver, but it wouldn't. Yeah, you know, there's those people where their hair gets just the most beautiful silver as they age. But looking at my mom's, mine's not going to do that either. Malaya said, I'm almost all gray. I'm going to be white by 40, I figure. Mm. Yeah, if I get it cut, it would help it not look so weighted down. You're absolutely right. And I need, I told um, the gal, because my husband uses the same gal, that you know after the first of the year, I'll go in. Sue Brown says, Malaya, our youngest son has more gray than I do. He may well be white by the time he's 42. <laughs> Philippa has racing stripes. Denise says, I've started to look for artsy kind of hats too. Yeah, I just thought, you know, if you had like a, um, if you had like a felted hat and what's killing me is I used to have a felted hat for ages, although it wasn't a good hat on me because it had a real short brim. And I think I need something that's a little bigger. But, you know, if you could get a felt hat and then you could, you know, decorate it your way. I cannot, I have a cowlick that really gets in the way. So the middle part doesn't work. What I miss most of all is my bangs, but they're so thin now. Um, it's not even wispy cute. So my big thing is, you know, any hairdresser has always said, Oh, well you could put, um, you could put gel in it and you could put product in it and do all these things. It's like, no, my idea of taking care of my hair is making sure it's clean. That's it. And brushing it. I used to be really into all that stuff and I just don't want to spend the time. I have other things I want to do with my time. Joanne says biotin is a wonderful supplement for the hair. It will thicken and make it grow. Well, I might have to check that out. Does anyone else think that hats, if worn a lot, can make your hair get even thinner? I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I just figured, you know, when I was on camera, I wouldn't wear it all the time. I never leave the house or hardly ever. So I wouldn't worry about that. June has beautiful silvery hair. Okay. We'll all be jealous of June. then. I can see that. Margaret said, I'm quite white in the front, but the back is still dark. Isn't that funny the way our hairs go? June said, I wanted to get black streaks. So I'd look like Cruella. Love my white gray hair. Easy peasy. Yeah. I like the idea of easy peasy. Philippa said, I've gone the opposite since menopause. My hair has gotten even thicker. It's like wearing a hat. Wow. I wish menopause would have done that for me. I think mine just made it even thinner. Pregnancy took my blonde and menopause took the thickness. I've never felt comfortable with hair above my shoulders. I don't know why. I guess it's just because I've always had really, really long hair. Hummer said, felt woolly sweaters and sew them, sew on them like you're doing your vessels. That's kind of what I've been thinking would be really fun to do. Maybe get um, get a hat. Well, I have a hat, a wide brim hat, and maybe I could make like a paper template. <laughs> Philippa. <laughs> so thicker hair. All over. <laughs> that was too funny. All right. I was going to try something with a longer piece, and now I don't remember what it was. Riri says, biotin taken with collagen works. I've got all those little two and three inch hairs growing where they were not. Beware, wherever you had hair may grow back as well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. I'm going to... First, let's see if we can get a knot at the end. That's pretty close to the end. And isn't there something about some collagen that's good for you and some, some that's not? I don't remember. My husband's a research guy. I'll let him do that for me. Gail, hold. Man, I have much more hair on my face since menopause. It's just. Gosh, the hormones, the weird things they do. 
Biotin and collagen. Okay, guys. Okay. I'm putting my husband on the research thing to go find something for me. Hey, there's Lorna. How are you doing, Lorna? Yeah, I think this, the circles will be a good way. I think maybe I'll just, I'll use up the thread on the, well, there's not that much space. So it won't take me that long to do that. And then I can start, you know, what I was thinking is I could, I could do bullion knots over them. I could do bullion knots to join them. I could do French knots inside one. I could do seed stitch inside them. Um, pure wool sweaters are like hen's teeth. Like really hard to find. I can't find, uh, you know, I used to look in the thrift stores all the time for wool stuff. And I finally had to give up and just buy it. Margaret says, oh, Gail, the hair on the face. I first had a mustache, then a beard. Now the two are joining up. Oh, wow. That is a challenge of getting older. Lorna said, I'm okay running around like a chicken with no head, making journals and getting ready for Christmas. How many trees do you have, Lorna? Riri says, I get all my supplements made by Solar. They package the products in dark brown glass, not plastic. I like that. All right, I'm making a note here. Let me uh, save this one so we can go check it out. I have not seen Terry today. I wonder if she's busy working and missed it. Didn't hear from her. Only 10 this year and hundreds of dozens of Christmas cookies for gifts. Oh, my goodness. Ten trees. Are you kidding? Tell me you're kidding, Lorna. I don't even have ten rooms. Danielle, who's um, sometimes here, also has multiple trees. Solgar. <laughs> I wonder, they would probably find me if I, if I, or I could finally find, I could probably, I could probably find them. If I looked under that. Okay, I'm just going to make this a small one. Let's see here. And yeah, kind of, I like the knots. It does kind of hold a few things together, but I'm just going to put it at each end. That's down from 12 last year and down from the normal 18. Oh my, do you have that many rooms or do you have multiple trees in the same room? I, I can't even fathom something like that we don't have a tree nobody comes here so we stop doing them for I, my husband might miss one I don't know I, I can't even imagine where would you okay so immediately what I'm thinking of is where in the world do you store enough Christmas ornaments for 12 trees How many rooms do I have that I could put a tree in? Okay, if I put a tree in every room, one, two, three, four, five trees, if I put a tree in every room. Two in the dining room, three in the basement. Is the basement like a lounge room? Margaret says, I only have three rooms. Ten trees make me shudder. I don't usually even have one. I usually go away for Christmas, so why bother? Yeah. Sue says, dude, Lorna, I'm lucky our son decorated our tree for us. It would have never happened this year. Gail says, same here. I'm a Buddhist and no one comes here anymore, so we don't do a tree. Yeah. Philippa says, no decorations this year so far, only two of us. Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, when the kids were littler and when I thought I might see my grandson, you know, it was fun to think about it, but or when we thought we might entertain and then we realized that we're really not people that like to do a lot of entertaining. All the bedrooms have trees. I would have loved that when I was younger. I would have loved to have trees in the bedroom. I never had a bedroom big enough for a tree, but it would have been nice. I got rid of a bunch of decorations last year. Kathy said my dogs would destroy a tree. So I only put one up at a shop at the shop. Yeah, that would make sense. You only have eight rooms and you, oh my goodness, Lorna, you are a crazy lady, but we already knew that, right? <laughs> we already knew that. The house is half the size of the, oh my gosh, be nuts. 
keep trying to give my son, you know, things when he comes to visit and I can't convince him yet to take Christmas ornaments. I think he'll have to wait until they get a house. They're all vintage and handmade decorations, so I can't get rid of any of them. Yeah, I used to um, really love to go looking for Christmas ornaments. Thank you, Gail, for being a mod with the mostest. All right, I, I confess the circles are easier than I thought they would. Vicki says, for thinning hair, I buy a product that is like a powder. You sprinkle it or brush it on the scalp, and it's the color of your hair. Two brands, Unite, Expanda, or Boldly Hairline Powder. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to put that on my list, too. All right. I like that they're all just a little different. Let's do one that can be bigger, but it's going to be thinner. Let's see. Where's my end? Yeah, I can just see all kinds of stuff that you can do once you have the circles down. Now, of course, another thing you could do would be to cut circles out, which is another thing I'm going to play with. But this was really easy because uh, there's just a lot of activity this week. I needed something simple. And I didn't want to show you guys what is on the video that's going to go out. It's only a start. Um, okay, since I got some of you guys here that watch the videos on YouTube um, when it's not alive, let me know when I'm working on a project that's going to be, you know, multiple, you know, it's going to take three, four, five videos to have it all done. Do you mind if it's like one day it's this project, the next day it's the next project, or would you want them all to be in order? Because I can do, I can share more if I don't have to worry about going in order, because I don't tend to like to go from start to finish. Well, these are all great tips. Thank you guys on the hair. Uh, reminder to everybody, make sure you are in live chat and not top chat so that you are always up to date with what we are talking about. Hello, Carol. How are you doing tonight or today? Sorry. <laughs> Jumping around is fine for you, Philippa. Maybe each. Yeah. And, and when, as the project starts, I will give it a playlist so that you can go over and see the whole thing. Random is okay with Jackie. Michelle says, I don't mind if it's not in order. Do what you like. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That, I figured that way it's not quite so boring, too. It's like, okay, so I'm tired of looking at that color. I want something different. So it's sort of, I figure it's like a win-win for both of us. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Yay. You guys are helping me make my life easy. Now, if there's just somebody here. Yeah, <laughs> Malaya, I am going to make you say it again because you say these things and they click into my head. Do you know, Malaya's got a group. She's got a Facebook group that's just all about empowering women. And she posts the most fabulous quotes. I swear, I save almost everything you post. And she says, I can, I can hear your voice, right? And the girls are kind of humming in the background, right? Do what makes your heart sing. The people will follow. And, and I got to give a thank you to all of you guys that are here and that do watch the YouTube videos. Things are shifting. I feel like... Um, I feel like I'm finding my circle of people and it just feels really good. The hard thing for me, okay, does anybody, can I get some feedback? Am I the only person that feels this way or is there anybody else that says, wow, things are falling into place just the way I want them to. I'm sure I'm going to blow it or I'm sure something's going to go wrong or I'm sure it's not real or, um, getting comfortable with the fact that things are working out the way you want them to. Yeah, Victoria, playlists really help keep things straight, especially if some projects take a while, like the black and white just because book. 
And I know it's all self-esteem issues with me. And I'm sure I'm the only creative here. I'm the only creative here that ever has any issues with self-esteem, right? <laughs> of course, I'm being sarcastic, facetious, whatever. Because we know there's all of us have that. And, you know, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm figuring things out. I'm figuring out a way that I can do more by not work by working smarter and not harder. Yeah, we're our own worst critics. You're right, Philippa. Malaya, yeah, when's the bottom going to fall out? Yep. I like that, Michelle. She's like, doubt is normal. It shows you have a conscience. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're awake. All right, let's see. I kind of want to do, where am I? Over here. So I come over here. Yeah, I think we all think we are imposters. Yep, the imposter sim syndrome is a real thing. It really is. All right, so if I double it with knots, I kind of, I kind of like that idea. You know, and there's no reason because what are we imposters at being ourselves? That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be ourselves. And as long as we're being ourselves, we can't be an imposter, right? I mean, that sounds kind of weird that we have to remind ourselves of that. But if all we're trying to do is get, get our stuff out there and share and inspire other people, you can't be an imposter because you're just being you. It's when you're trying to be somebody else, that's when you're the imposter. You're faking it. You're trying to be somebody that you're not. Andrea, good point. The more important the project, the more doubt I have. Yep. Victoria, absolutely. Too good to be true. Yeah, it's it's weird. Conscientious. Yeah, that, that you're thinking about things. You're being, um, yeah, I get you, Michelle. Oops, wait a minute here. Jackie said, I'm an optimist. If things don't work out exactly how I think they should, I know in my mind's eye there's a reason. Oh, that's that's very advanced of you. I, I can be like that most of the time, but sometimes when things start going really good. Ooh, Lorna, that's good. She said, I saw a thing about being an imposter is because you are growing and have still have a skill to learn. I like that idea. June said, no, because things currently aren't. Everything I've been doing is giving me a hard time. But if that came easier, then I would probably feel that way. Yeah, I'm sorry you're having a hard time right now. When, when projects make me struggle, when everything feels like I am, you know, overwhelmed with things, um, everything is, I had a day like that earlier this week. Gail said, if I missed anybody's links, please let me know and she will get them up there for you. Thank you for doing that, Gail. I had a day where it, I, I wanted just to sit down and cry. I think it was Monday. It was like the, the studio is such a mess that I couldn't find, you know, any of the threads I was looking for. And that was, you know, I couldn't blame anybody because it was my own fault for not putting stuff away afterwards. I had laid out three or four projects. None of them seemed to make sense. I'm taking a class and everything felt like, you know, it wasn't working the way the teacher was doing it. And of course, you know, I know I have to be me, but, uh so it's, it's very, it was very disheartening. And I basically just had a nice long chat with a friend that helped me get past it. Joanne said, I thought I had found my niche as a creative, but I didn't sell one thing this Christmas. And now I'm looking at all those supplies I have and wondering if I'm on the right course. Oh, Joanne, I think this is a great thing to bring up in the group and discuss more. I'm marking that so I don't forget it. Um, anybody have any thoughts for Joanne? I think, you know, this year, Anybody else that's selling on Etsy, how have your sales been? I think as the world has started to open up a little bit more, has been, um, it, it, there have been a lot of shifts, I think, a lot of shifts. And I don't think it's that you haven't found your niche. I think it might also be that you're ready to stretch and grow a little bit. Sue Fiber Art said, I once had a commission to make a hand felted bed hanging with woodland, river, and dogs on it. I couldn't understand why she chose me. Oh, because it's not your style. Margaret said, I have learned to go with the flow. If something is stopping me from going that way, then I will go the other way. Much more productive and satisfying. Well, that's kind of why I have so many things in progress because I, I need to, I need to figure out how to make that work differently. Okay, I'm going to cut just that one off so it's more even. 
Oh, Malaya said I had two whole months of days like that. It was very trying. That is exhausting. Lorna said, a hard time. I'm making five ledger journals, all five signatures. The last bloody hell, I sewed it together seven times as I sewed it backwards twice, upside down once, crooked, then forgot the fabric that holds the covers. And I never saw the mistakes until it was all sewn and glued together. Oh, my goodness. That's that's so frustrating, Lorna. Malaya said, my sales on Etsy is up and down, but it took me four years of selling things to form an actual customer base. Good point. Oh, Philippa. She said, Etsy's put me on holiday because I won't sign their fees grab system for payments. Sue Fiber Art said oh, she couldn't understand why they chose her because she was feeling like maybe she wasn't good enough. Oh, I'll come back to that. Etsy's doing very badly for so many um, forms are full of people whose sales are down 75 to 85 percent. Wow. June says my sales have been non-existent too. I've been wondering if I should change, but I create because I enjoy what I create. And if I change for sales and I feel like I'm selling myself out. Good point. Yeah, Lorna, you always need more sleep. I think you always need more sleep. We all do. Probably as, as women of a certain age, we're not getting enough sleep. Or if you're a woman that has young kids at home, you're not getting enough sleep. Gail agrees with you, Sue. She said, I can relate. I had a commission for a painting that I felt that way. I'll, I have a potential commission. It's not, um, I haven't quoted or priced yet and gotten anything nailed down, but I'm terrified because uh, of the way she found me. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm terrified. Commissions scare the heck out of me. I would much rather make what I want to make. And then if somebody buys it, great. And if not, that's fine, but it's um, it's very scary to me to do a commission and hope that I'm going to get up to somebody else's expectations. Gail said, I won't do any more commissions. Yeah, and I had stopped doing them for a long time, and this one um, appeals to me, but but also terrifies me if it, if it happens, and it might not even happen, and that's okay because I am super grateful that just just talking about it with the, the person um, validated the direction that I wanted to keep going, you know, for next year, the, the areas that I want to explore. And sometimes that's what we need is we just need validation from someone, you know, and how can we validate each other um, by sharing your work? by sharing your work in the Facebook group, on Instagram, on YouTube, on, on all the places. And then if you're part of our group here, if you're part of our circle, please support your fellow creatives. Please give them the words that let them know that you have seen their work and the effort that they've put into things, because that makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Lorna said, I don't do commission. I'm not the healthiest on the best day to make anything on demand. Yeah. Philippa said, I don't do commissions. Learn the hard way that they have too many expectations. If they like my style, they, I say, buy something already made. Yep. We, we got to protect ourselves. Hello, Sandy. How are you doing? Are the kids all, grandkids all excited about Christmas? Margaret said, I very rarely accept commissions. I never really know whether I'm going to be able to do it. Not the work. I never worry about that, but I have to do things in my own time. Yeah. Yeah. Sharing our work makes us feel good. Yes. And seeing that, you know, a fellow creative has seen your work and comments on it. I think just, I don't know. I've told you guys this before. It's your, your words are gasoline for me to keep going. All right. We're going to. Slightly circle, but but wonky, because because I'm slightly wonky. <clears throat> Some days more wonky than others. <coughs> Hydration, Victoria. Where's my little tickle to hydrate? So, oh gosh, I yeah, I am zipping through this one today. That's good. Let's. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to pull that needle out in this because I want to see 
if I did it like, okay, I think I'll do one that's like a double coal. Oh, Sandy's working on commissions right now. Big Daddy wants ornaments for his coworkers. I think it's a little bit easier. <laughs> You're not sure how well he will pay? Well, I bet you he's going to keep the snow, snow shoveled, right? Um, it's easier slightly to do a commission if you understand yourself as an artist. I'm just drinking water right now and I'll have my tea afterwards. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Lorna. I was doing that when I was making a lot of books. She said, I keep a wait list for styles of journals when people ask. And when I make a journal in that style, I let them know first. It's a really nice way to work. You're watching on the TV as you're perched on the end of the bed with my feet in a bowl of hot water, soaking them as they're aching really badly. Ugh. Restaurant work is so hard. So hard. All right, I want to finish the circles because I'm anxious to start putting some blue on here because I think it's going to be really cool. So you might have seen um, on Instagram, if you follow me over there, I bought some crochet hooks. And I don't want to crochet a blanket. Um, oh, wait a minute here. I'm going to come back. June said, I've borrowed your secret squirrel idea, but I'm calling them secret Santas because they are giving me the gift of a view. Perfect. I like that. Buttonhole wheels would be great in here, definitely. There's a, I, I want to just kind of play around with more stuff than rather than going back to my normal, usual things. Joanne said, I don't post in groups much because I think the comments are not always sincere. People like things because it's a polite thing to do. I don't comment anymore if I don't really like it. Yeah, well, I think, okay, I, I'm slightly prejudiced because I think you guys rock. But in our group, I don't see a whole lot of just, you know, like it, like it, like it. I see people commenting based on what they've seen. And I would, if I was going to make a request, I would rather people not comment if they can't say something, you know, that feels sincere. So I totally get you, Joanne. I think that's also the hazard when there are people that post, you know, like just a, they, they uh, drop a link and then dash. They drop a link and take off and say, you know, come see my stuff. And so they want to get the views. They want to get the attention for themselves, but they don't give anything back to somebody else. And I, I don't, I get frustrated with that. Barbie, I'm still here. I got another 45 minutes. I'll be here a while. You need to set an alarm. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's the, I think I've mentioned this before. There's the gal that does the Etsy stuff and she sends out a text message when she's going live. But I just think that's, I don't know. I could actually do a little reminder in the group, but it just feels like I don't want to be bugging people all the time. Sue Brown says, I just don't think to take pictures and or post on Facebook. Yeah. Michelle said, when I was working, earrings sold really well. All the girls in the office loved looking at them. It was a big building, so lots of gals. Also, cards sold well. She might have um, soul collage today, and if it's a soul collage day, then she doesn't make it until uh, later in the day. All right, so if I'm going to make a real little one, can we do that? Of course we can do that. All right, where can we get a little one in there? You think I should put a reminder in the group? Well, this that slacker would appreciate the nudge of a reminder. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I missed Philippa's color combo. She's doing a doodle cloth. Ooh, in lime green and shocking pink. Can't wait to see that. Okay, I can I can definitely um, look at how we can do some reminders. And we'll try it. 
We'll just try it. Hey, Terry, she was doing her jewelry. She was on another planet. I thought so. Riri said, there are those that are des that desperately need attention. They will really say really sorry stuff out of pity. It drives me nuts. Yeah, there are people that, um, yeah, I know what you mean, Riri. Victoria said, I often think people might think I'm being polite when I comment. So I, as I do post, I love it. Or that's so awesome a lot, but it's always absolutely sincere. Awesome is my most used word. Yeah. And you can also just go through and hit the like button. Um, because especially if you're on Facebook, it does help, uh, or on Instagram or on YouTube. Oh, we had this discussion. Was it just last week? We were talking about what counts a like you don't have to watch a video for a like to count. You do not have to watch a video for a life like to count. For a view, for, for it to count as a view on YouTube, the video has to run for 30 seconds and you have to be the person that clicked on it. So that's how it counts for a view. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before last that we were talking about that sort of thing. So Terry's been busy making earrings, build an inventory. Trying to meet an order. Nice. Orders are good. Okay, why is my thing not automatically going forward here? Barbie says, I'm the same. I don't always comment when something moves me. I tend to get effusive and then worry that they think I'm insincere. Well, now we know it is just the way you guys are. <laughs> I always leave hearts on Facebook. Yeah. The thing is, is, is when we're in a, if we're having a time where we're struggling with projects, sometimes just getting that little, you know, whether it's a heart or somebody that, that drops a note and said, you know, you're doing something different, or I just love this direction you're going or, or whatever that, that actually is appropriate for the situation. Obviously it's got to be sincere, but you just, you never know. I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make. You never know what your words are going to, what power your words are going to have for somebody. Yeah. Gail says, I just can't possibly watch all the people's videos and live streams. A lot of times I just pop in for a minute or two and give a thumbs up. And that's super. Philippa said, what's with the star thing on Facebook popped up today to sign up. I have no idea. I'll have to check that out. Good morning, Sharon. Lorna says, I only do likes most of the time. Sometimes I will comment with hearts. It's not a, it's all about not enough time in the day for all the online things I see. Yeah, exactly. Barbie is an absolute riot and she is an effusive girl and we love her just the way she is. Oh, it's said to earn money. Oh, um, it's their, uh, yeah, it, it, it. I forgot what they called it. I, I went in there for a little bit and decided that, no, um, it wasn't going to be for me. But some people might like it. Wait a minute here. Um, Jackie said, the artists I really enjoy, and they have a permanent schedule, I put on my notifications. Facebook posts usually show up long after it's over. Yeah, I think what I'll do is start... Um, I will just put it in the calendar for the group. So I'll start that in January maybe. And I will, cause you know, I do it every Wednesday at noon, my time. And the nice thing about it being on Facebook is it will show up in your time zone. Yeah. Got to be careful. Got to be careful, Gail. You're right. Victoria said, I'm exactly the same, Gail, not just our group, but all groups I'm a member of. I scroll down my newsfeed, and if I see it, I react to it one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, it, it counts for the artist. Always like so it counts for the artist. And again, it's not always about making it count for YouTube. It's making it count so the artist sees that those that, that many people actually, you know, said something positive. They, they were thinking something. Sandy said, when I comment, I am not giving platitudes. I find that if the artist took the time to make the video for me to view for free, I can at least give some love. Nice. 
Gail said, just the fact that you do the notification thing a half hour prior helps a lot. Yeah, and that's it, Riri. I do YouTube, but not on Facebook. I've been thinking about, there are some calendar programs where I could send out notifications, like email notifications, because we can't count on YouTube to do them. But you can count on me being here every Wednesday. Victoria, it was my first time doing a live on Instagram, so I didn't do anything, you know, notification wise. I now understand there's a calendar function that you can set up a reminder. Hey, Barbara, that's what I figured. Soul collage. Yep. There she is. Let's see, I'm getting caught up here. I think I'm caught up. Oh, I think I'm caught up. Yeah, and just because we're subscribed to the channels, though, doggone YouTube does not send all the notifications. That's what's really frustrating. And there's nothing we can do about it. That's why if you know, like Jackie said, that your artist is on on a regular time, put it on your own calendar. Gail said, I rarely go on Instagram or see anything posted about it. Yeah. Michelle, I have tried very hard to be consistent on my lives. Once I went down from two hours to an hour and a half, it seems to be, um, it seems to be working for me. All right. There's a really wonky circle and I'm okay with that. I know Sandy, there's just no, there, there's not enough hours in the day, but I'm, I think I might throw one more zoom in there, at least one more. Yeah, and having the schedule helps me because I very much try to keep Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as my people days. So then I can have some, some days, a, a big block of time for working on my own art. And not that this isn't my own art, but art where I'm not worrying about trying to talk with the audience. Barbara said, I, find, I seldom go on Instagram only to follow the Kitten Academy graduates and things like Carve December. Yeah. We find a way to make the different. You don't have to be everywhere. I'm. Um, I was trying out uh, TikTok. I'm leaving. It's not for me. But I tried it. We had a great time. We had a nice crowd. Lots of new folks joined us last night, Barbara. Lots of fun. Yeah, Terry has been obsessively working. She's like. Gail said, nothing on YouTube aggravates me more than someone who says they're going to stream on a certain day and time and they aren't there or they just go live anytime they think about it. Yeah, I just think a live needs to be something. If you're going to do it on a, on a regular basis, it needs to be something that people can count on. And that's how you build the audience. I mean, you guys have built, you guys have built my audience. You guys are, are building my community because I've, I've been able to give you this regular time. Sandy said, I would love to have another opportunity to Zoom, but I know you have a life. Well, ping me and let me know, you know, can is there a night that you can do it? Because I need to do it in the evenings uh, to be better available to people in Australia. But I think I would go later than my four o'clock that I normally go. Barbie, <laughs> she says, this cracks me up that you are so phobic about peopling. It's because where my energy comes from. You know, an extrovert gets their energy from being around people. And I can be very extroverted when I was doing my public speaking, when I was teaching, I can do all that extroverted stuff, but it takes me so long to recover because I get my energy from quiet. And by quiet, I mean no TV, no music, my husband, my dog, my garden, that's it. And that's where my energy comes from. Margaret, yeah, you, you can't do it all. Can one live be an IG and... Um, and TY, do you mean YouTube? Oh, and YouTube at the same time? You know what, Riri? That's a good question. Now that I can stream from the webcams, I need to add, I need to find that out. <gasps> good question. Thank you for that. Yeah, Carol, you're very consistent too. And it just, it helps me. Yeah, when they say they're going to be on at a certain time and they show up 30 minutes late. Yeah. Or when they say they're going to do this thing and they don't have any other things with them right? It's like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to go get, I mean, sometimes there's something I want to show you guys. And, and I'll run up and get something. But for the most part, when I start a project, the idea is to, 
you know, have it right here ready to go. And I go to a live and they're like, oh, I, you know, I need to go get my jelly paint. I need to get my, I didn't, I, I don't have enough time to sit there while you gather your supplies. Joanne said, Susan, I don't need a reminder for the Wednesdays on YouTube. This group is entrenched in my mind and spirit. However, if I didn't see your notifications, I would wonder what's going on. Yeah. Riri says, I don't like people, but I'm a fab phony. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you fake it till you make it. You fake it in the situations. Well, for a while, yeah, I don't like the sounds either, Barbara. Um, I was setting my lives on YouTube for a month at a time. So they would be there and you guys then could click the reminders. And then um, some people were like, well, why are you doing that? You know, so much ahead of time. I was like, well, it just seemed like one more way to let people know. I watch almost all my YouTube um, in closed caption mode. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely share. I can stream from YouTube or from StreamYard. I can go to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. But now that I can use my webcams and StreamYard on Instagram, it's a really good point to see if I could do it that way because that would be a lot of fun. All right, now I'm going to have to try that. Oh, no, you know, well, what I would have to do if I did that because Instagram is portrait mode and YouTube is landscape mode. So I would have to make sure that I only worked in this small little area. So I'll have to I'll have to play with it. We'll have to give it a try. That would be an impromptu live if I did that. Victoria said Wednesdays, Wednesday lives are a routine now, just like going to a friend's house for a brew and a chat every week. Oh yeah. I like that idea. Barbie said, I miss watching someone use a digital thingy I bought from them. And in their demo, they made a mistake that ruined the whole project. Unless your glue was slow drying, like warn us or retake it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some things that you just shouldn't do live. You know, bring to a certain, you know, uh, point. And then it's like, you know, this, if there's stuff that has to dry or you have to go to the ironing board or something, unless it's all set right up there in your stream area, I just think it's disrespectful to your viewers who, you know, they've got so many other choices that they could watch. Um, you're, you can only add music to reels on Instagram. You can't add it to just a picture post. So you have to post a reel. Sharon, the only way I was able to see... Um, yeah, I don't like the, the vertical format, but I'm, I've adapted. The only way I was able to see the comments was because I was sitting here at um, this setup and I had my two webcams going and I had StreamYard up. That was the only way I was able to see the comments. Yeah, I, I can't work with within a live. Yeah, disrespectful to my yeah, Barbie. Yes, you're still steamed. I get it. And you're you're, you're right to be. All right, let's see. Maybe we'll put this guy. Okay, maybe I lied. Maybe I'm not going to get stitching in between there. Yeah, reels only for music. That's it. Okay, wait a minute. I missed something. What did Andrea... <laughs> Andrea says, even Wednesday, my even my husband knows that Wednesdays I go to America. I love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you for all of you who that come to America with me on Wednesdays, that come to visit me in America on Wednesdays. Yeah, I think YouTube is the best. But you you can only you can't add it to a photo unless it's you you can have still photos but they're going to have to be a, in a, a video format in order to add music you just you can't I don't think to just a, a photo post because there's no way to to play it I think YouTube is the best for lives although Facebook works too and one thing we talked about okay we have different people here so maybe somebody here would have a thought. One thing we talked about in the Zoom last night was um, giving Facebook Rooms a try in the group because it's still a private group. Um, we wouldn't have people, just anybody being able to come in. 
Um, so we thought maybe we, we might give that a shot. Because if I'm sitting here working, you know, I'm happy to turn on the camera and just be available if somebody wants to pop into a room and say hi. Are they fun, Malaya? Okay. It's pretty much like Zoom, right? It's just on Facebook. And you guys can all be doing your own thing. I was thinking we might give them a try and then maybe um, that might be the impromptu thing. Let me know your experiences with them, uh, Malaya, and anybody else that's done them. I just think uh, every time, okay, yeah, it's just um, new technology. Well, you're on Facebook already, Andrea, so it's just the same thing. <clears throat> Oh, look at Victoria's got an Instagram Reels hack. Choose the Reels option. Choose how long you, you want it to last, 30, 60, 90 seconds. <clears throat> then keep adding the same photo until it's full and add your music. Ah. Yeah, I can see that with a lot of rooms. But considering we, we, um, we never have, you know, 10 people showing up at a Zoom thing. Yeah, I was just kind of thinking once in a while, it might be a way to let some of the people in different parts of the country, you know, connect. I mean, because you guys can see me here every week, but to be able to see each other face to face is just what's really fun to me. Done it on your personal page and left it for people to join and craft and chat. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I guess you might need to um, you might need to have some controls over how many people. I know there are some groups where the whole purpose of them is, you know, <clears throat> different times they do different rooms, different people open them, and I wouldn't want the group to be nothing but you know people opening the rooms. I do that with photos um, on the not on the reels, but I guess when I add a photo to a video. And I just stretch it out longer so I have the music on it. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, so here's art by committee. Oh, we're missing Fiona. You do have to be on Facebook to see that someone has opened a room, unless like the one I joined, they open it every Thursday for hours. Reserve talking for person. I like YouTube because I'm more of a writer than a talker. I respect that, Jackie. All right, so my thought is... Is this balanced enough with circles? And I'm thinking maybe I need to leave some space for the eyes to rest. Although I really like this thick one. I kind of feel like I need to have one more thick one, maybe right over, right over here. One more thick one. Ah, there's the link to the Facebook group. Thank you, Terry. Malaya said, I think only the admin can open. A yes, that's what I was thinking. And I only have a few admins in the group. And so it's easy enough to chat with them about it. Yeah, I think, um, I think you're right. We would need to have some kind of a heads up knowing that there was going to be a room open. Might be a good thing to try on a night that I know my husband's going to be up doing stuff. So I'm going to be up, but not doing a whole lot. Okay. I'm going to just, I meant to try doing it that way. All right. I want to, I want a real little one here is what I'm thinking. Thick and little. Starting to get irritated with one of our neighbors. <clears throat> His dog was barking all morning. I mean, we had to get up early because the dog was barking and it was like freezing outside. I'm sure he was barking to try and get in the house out of the cold. And I can hear him out there barking again. I'm thinking somebody's going to need to go have a chat. Well, Sue, that's a good point. If I do it on an evening, I would have to be on an evening. Um, where I knew that I was going to be able to sleep in the next day because I would get too amped up. Sandy said I should just come to Kansas. We can chat in person. Have I been to Kansas? I think I've been to Kansas once years ago for a conference. 
the dog is doing much better. Thank you, Gail. She um, has been, she, she had to get up this morning because my husband got up because the neighbor's dog was barking. One thing about her being deaf is that we don't hear her barking all the time. Or she doesn't hear them dark barking, so she doesn't get all excited. Sorry, I'm distracted. I was thinking about this thing here. I'm thinking about that poor dog. It's just... Zoe. Our dog is Zoe. I'm just not much of a traveler. I used to do that to promote my books, but it's just not my thing. Sandy says, oh, Barbara Clark, Clark you come too. Then it'll be the best idea. <laughs> it was one of the most fun at my writing conferences. Is it wasn't, I mean, it was always nice to go hear the editors and agents speak, but the best part, of course, was getting together with writer friends. Ah, great question. Vicki said, do you find that you like to have a focal point on each work or do you like to have people focus on the whole? And you know what? The answer is yes and yes. Um, and it depends. It really, you know, like the trees picture. Let's see. Let me grab this. Okay. This one, you know, I am kind of encouraging you to focus into the center here where you're going to walk into the forest and you're going to escape in there. But something like this is more just uh, upside down, is just an exploration of textures. And you can kind of, bye bye, Sandy. Um, so it's an all over piece. So it just, it really does depend on the piece. I think the dog is freaking cold, is what I think. And I think he's lonely. I think it's a young dog and I don't know this person. Um, yeah, it's just very frustrating. Sharon says, oh my God, is somebody having a heat wave somewhere because it's so cold? Turned so cold here the past two days, it must be snowing somewhere. Thank you, Victoria. All right, I'm feeling better about this little thing here. I think for me, um, because of the way I work, and I, I've got some plans next year to start experimenting with some things using reference photos, which is not something I've done a lot of because it sounds very much like an artist artist thing, and I so much doubt myself as being an actual artist. Oh, Andrea and Victoria have snow. You can keep it. We've had ice, ice, ice the last few days. But I'm going to try, you know, working with a reference photo. I have something else with trees I want to do. And I will have to be thinking about a focal point. Yeah, it's real scary to go talk to somebody in the neighborhood about their dog um, just because you don't want to create, you know, bad blood in the neighborhood. Yes, it's outside, Riri. Yes. And that's what's pissing me off. He might have a dog house, but, you know, it's just, ugh. all right, let's just tack this down just a little better. We're having weather typical to a Seattle winter, but it's northern Indiana here. Yeah, isn't it? You know, the climate change stuff is bizarre. All right, I just want to tack this one down. And I missed. So we'll go again. Now I've got extra um, thread left on here and I'm just going to come along and just add some more stitches. You've called animal control more than once. Yeah, it might come to that, Sue. It might. Oh, you, you only hit 38. We've been below, below freezing the last two days over here. Really, really thick ice on the, the deck where you have to be worried when you walk outside with Zoe. Yeah, the, the dogs are pack animals that want to be with people. And like I said, I, I don't know the person living there. It's I just know it's a rental. But I mean, Zoe, when she goes outside, she just wants to come right back in again because it's so cold. I can't imagine that this dog has been outside all night.
So I'm just going to use up my thread this way. It sort of straightens us there. I'm glad I put another thick one there. I may have the urge. We'll see off camera. So you haven't gotten, uh, you're near the hills though, right, Michelle? You're in the. Michelle and I, for those of you that don't know, live, gosh, I guess we're probably just about 45 minutes or so away, half hour away from each other with the mountain between us. Yeah, you're right. As a senior, she wouldn't want to stay out very long. She got to go for a nice walk before the live. My husband took her for a nice walk to get her tired out so she wouldn't be too rambunctious while I was live. The video that I'm going to put out um, a little bit later today, I had to go back in and cut out the Zoe Barks. Yeah, chain them all up all day to stay out in the cold. Absolutely. I am right there with you, Riri. The dog we had before this dog, uh, we had got from a rescue and had been rescued because it had been just on a chain outside all the time. I was like, no. And German Shepherds are super pack dogs. All right, I think that's enough. It's a good time to tie that off. Yeah, Zoe wants the choice. Does she want to be, if she wants to be alone, then she has, you know, a couple other rooms she can go into. And some days she just like, she'll move away from us. It's like, nope, I don't want to be around any people. Um, and then at, at a certain times of the day, like at dinner time, she wants everybody in there together. All right. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten circles. You know, I kind of like this. Um, I wasn't sure I'm doing this to see how I feel about circles and I kind of like it. All right. So then what color do we like? I, just, I like both of these. I like all of these with it. All right. What do I want to do? Um, knots, right? Knots are all, we always want to do knots. I always want to do knots. Oh, you're near great America. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a nice start. And I think um, it will, because it's small, I can finish it before too long. Okay, this is a silk merino. I might not even need, I wonder if I could get that in a thinner needle. Uh, why, why make it struggle? But I do need a threader. Bye, Carol. Thanks for popping in. Yeah, so this this was a good so finally I have learned a lesson. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I think we may have to call if it keeps up. Um usually when I want to do an experiment, I do something really big. And then it's frustrating because it takes so long to finish. This way I'm experimenting and And it's not, it's not so big that it's going to take me forever to finish something. All right. Where do I want to put some knots? Um, I think I want to do knots inside. Let's pick a little circle. Oh, good. That slides right through there. We're just going to fill this one with French knots. All right. People have been telling me this silk merino blend would be a beautiful thing to stitch with. And my gosh, it is like butter. <gasps> oh, this is bad. I should have asked for a big gift certificate to Etsy to go shopping for more fiber because I need more fiber, right? Like a hole in the head. <sighs> this may be. Hey, Fiona. Missed you. We did some art by committee. How are you feeling? Friends popped in. Oh, they didn't know it was Wednesday. Yeah, it's going to America Day. Yeah, Sue, think of your experiments as tasty bites maybe so you don't bite off more than you want to chew. I like that idea. Yeah, I think here they have to give like a warning or something before they, they take them unless the dog is like, you know, in serious health distress. But I think putting it on record may be the thing to do.
Yeah, and I want to do like um, like Sue Fiber Art's been doing these these small little squares, uh, fabric collages, and then playing around with them while watching football. It's another nice size. Sharon says I could drool over your dyed fabrics all day. Thank you. It's interesting for me that um, I want to use up the ones I have now because I, I want to go about dyeing fabric a different way. So I keep thinking I'm going to get some in the shop. But again, you know, everybody has fabric. Everybody colors fabric. So I don't know that dyeing fabrics really is a good seller. Terry's getting a new bed pillow for Christmas. Ooh. All right, you just reminded me I made a note of several things I needed to order today and I need to make sure to that I didn't like do something funny with my note. See, now when I was first thinking about this, I was thinking no beads and now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, of course I'm going to have to put beads in here, right? I do not worry if it's a wonky, wonky knot. Riri says, I really like this work you're doing. Thank you. I, You know, I can now... I'm really glad I did that Pinterest board. Just what I started doing was just saving anything that had circles on it that made me pause for whatever reason. I didn't stop to think about it. I just put together the board and then I went back and looked at the board and said, okay, now what are we going to do with all this stuff? So what I'm thinking I don't know that I would use this. I could use the same thread in between, but I think I might use, didn't I have a, yeah, I guess this is kind of, no, this is like an eight. You told John that I've been bad. Terry said, I told John I've been bad shopping craft supply sales, but I really need a pillow. <laughs> might use that in between. Ray Ray said, I bought a bag of yarn thread, thread yarn for $2.99 at Goodwill. They're beautiful. One matches my jeans project perfectly. I think it's wool. Yeah, um, I like stitch stitching with wool, but this wool has some silk in it. And the difference between it, it feels, oh my gosh, it's just amazing. And I know I got it on Etsy and it was, it had to have been fairly reasonable because since it was a new to me thing, I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of it. I scored big time um, on some fiber fill. There was a gal in our local crafters group that she said it was, she had ordered it 23 years ago and it was the huge double bags. And she says, I haven't, I never even opened the box. So for 23 years it had been sealed up and did anybody want it? And I put my name in and I got it. And I thought, well, you know, the worst case scenario is that I have to dispose of it because she didn't. It's perfect. Everything was still sealed inside. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah, the silk and the wool makes it so much smoother. It's just amazing. Sue, Sue says, one of Santa's elves has been buying more fabric and stickers and stuff that ends up in my studio. It might be me. Yeah, I hear that. I hear it. I hear it. Yes, pillows are expensive. Sharon said, and it's so hard to find one that's comfortable. I can't even tell you how big the pillow graveyard is that I've got, but got for something else. A firm, oh, see, and pillows, are they are, they're tough, tough, tough. Oh, I think it was used with the punch needle that was in the bag. I'm just glad to have it. I just got a punch needle set, and I'm anxious to play with that because I think it'll be a good way to add some more texture. Okay, this is like my new favorite thread. Holy cow. I have a huge ball of it. This is just a, a small of it because I had a knot and I just went ahead and I'm going to have to get more. Always yes to beads. Four things immediately spring to mind when I think of you. Green, nature, fiber, beads. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And gosh, Victoria, how long ago was it that I made that journal that you got? That was like the first time I started playing with beads at all. Whoops. I, it was so slippery. I pulled it right out of the needle. Um, wow. Yeah, this, oh, uh, I need to warn my husband. <laughs> I always tell him, he, you know, thank you for shopping for me. You know, when I go shopping on Etsy and these guys, 
These are disposable needle threaders, but what are they like two bucks for a hundred of them? So I'm okay with that. Oh, this is a Merino wool silk blend. Merino wool silk blend. So it's got, um, it's not I don't know if it's worsted. I don't know a whole lot about yarn. Uh, maybe one of our, our yarn people would be able to say something, but um, it's not got like a really thick twist to it. And so I can see all the lovely little fuzzies. I don't remember. I'll, I'll post it in the group. I might've paid 10 bucks for a skein, but I mean, it's like a yarn skein. So it's huge. Riri, I don't think you'd punch yourself, um, and especially if you put it in a hoop. The thing to remember about the needle punch is that um, you 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 can pull it out very easily. So when you're done, you need to secure the backside either with a light coating of glue or some um, heat and bond. Vicky said, I just bought a lot of dollar store beads and they are terrible. They're flimsy, cracked and broke easily. Oh yeah. I'm just sticking with the glass beads from now on. Just the glass beads. Yep. Actual yarn. Fiona says, that's funny, Victoria. I think of Susan and I think of clusters. Yes. And my seam ripper, right? Hey mouse, how are you doing? Ah, Andrea says, I have a punch needle hoop. It's so deep. It's deep, so you can't stab yourself. Michelle said, I think of Susan and texture. Yeah, texture is kind of where I want to be. I think that's my happy zone. It's probably finger, finger. Yeah, it's either fingerling or lace. Wait, um, I can't remember which. But I will post. There are a couple shops. I've got another order coming in. <laughs> um, that was a wool and yak mix. It was also supposed to be very soft. Still scared, but might try it anyway. Yeah. I just picture and just the texture. I mean, that, that was what it was all about for me was the texture. Malaya says, cheap dollar store beads are good for dangles and embellishment things. I used one of my little Christmas tree decorations on as the star on top. Oh, thank you. Terry grabbed one. One link to show you guys. And I'll post in the group. Um, I ordered a few different ones. I ordered, um, yeah, I won't even remember. I'll, I'll just post the things in the group that I ordered and as I'm experimenting with them. The one it came with is adjust. Yeah, so the, I bought the kit that has both the, the, the one handle and then the adjustable handle because that gives you loops of differing heights, which could just make some really interesting texture. Um, this is wonderful for making French knots. It's, it's probably about the same thickness as a number three pearl cotton, but because it's not super thick, not, not super tight, it's, uh, it's just got a different feel to it than I don't have a, do I have a three here? I've got some fives. Okay, wait a minute. Here's a three. All right. I can show you this. This is a good way to stop. All right. So bring the camera down. This is, and it's either fingerling or lace weight, merino wool and silk yarn versus a number three Pearl cotton. Yeah, the thin yarns just are gorgeous for that. And let me see what else I've got here. Um, Margaret said, I just bought some Merino silk 50-50 sock yarn. Looking forward to knitting with it. Don't know how silk will go in socks. Oh, silk socks are supposed to be really good. There's a velvet embroidery stitch. Pull this out of the way. Uh, which can be used to give a punch needle effect. Ooh, Wait a minute, I'm going to have to look that one up, Andrea. The fiber I fall in love with is bamboo. Oh, Gail, I love bamboo too. And one of the ones that's coming in is wool and bamboo mix. And I did get some bamboo fibers from that Global Artisans as well. The wool is fab for shaggy French knots. Yeah, and, and this one... Um, 
they're they're kind of perfect in the circle so i'll probably have to do something to make things slightly imperfect but i do and because i didn't make any loopy ones i'm trying to make these be somewhat consistent i don't know why because i know i'm gonna do something else yeah i just love bamboo fiber we sleep on bamboo sheets it's so soft. This is a long needle, so it should probably be the last one. I have not stitched with mohair, uh, but I guess, you know, as long as you can get it through the needle, I mean, if you can get it through the needle, you can stitch. It depends on the fabric you're stitching on. Some really, really thick yarns, you're going to want to have something that's got a little bit more of an open weave. And they say for punch needle, um, the Aida cloth and Hessian, that sort of stuff is what's ideal. You want an open weave for the punch needle. Don't do it on a really thick, tight weave or like a brocade. It's going to be much more frustrating. All right. Michelle doesn't do, I don't think you do videos on YouTube, right? Michelle, you just do posts on Facebook. All right. Here's where we are. It's a good place to stop. I will definitely be experimenting some more with this. I want to do some, um, gosh, maybe I will do some feather stitch around here. And then I've got, bamboo fiber, most bamboo fiber is rayon where it's processed and re-excreted. Perhaps um, Bamboo failed, to, wait a minute, failed terribly at what? I missed something. As long as it's real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, real versus fake. Yes, I agree. I agree. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point. Time for me to go get my um, tea. And yeah, let's see this piece next week. Okay, I'll, maybe I'll be good. And I'll only do a little bit in between. I might do a little bit of something. So I'm thinking what? More French knots, some seed stitch, some twig stitch, maybe some fern stitch, maybe fern stitch instead of feather stitch because then I can go around all the curves that it, it failed that it wasn't real bamboo all right thank you everybody for joining me thanks for those of you that are in other countries that came back to America at least for today yeah thanks for the thumbs up after the um the live goes off if you could leave a comment and let me know you were here and had a good time that helps too have a great week, everybody. And then I will let you know in the group. Um, we'll go ahead and give Facebook Rooms a try. Why not? Why not give it a shot? Have a fabulous week, everybody. I'll see you next time.